please if you're new to my channel kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell it is absolutely free so in this video i'm going to show you how to compute payee tax considering the implication of finance act 2020. let me start by saying payee tax is a kind of personal income tax now this personal income tax they are paid by individuals okay so if you're working you have a nine to five you earn a salary you are paying tax to the state government so this personal income tax is governed by personal income tax act just like company income tax is governed by or is regulated by company income tax act capital gain tax regulated by capital gain tax act petroleum profit tax regulated by petroleum profit tax act so there are various kinds of taxes and they have their own acts so from time to time these acts need amendments or some things become outdated like maybe in 1950 penalty for late filing was 100 naira so today 100 naira is almost worthless so they need to amend and all of that so finance act basically is amending section 33 subsection 2 of personal income tax act and the focus is on the gross income is trying to redefine gross income okay that is the whole summary so we're going to do a computation i'm going to show you how to compute pay tax considering the amendment to the personal income tax act which is contained in finance act 2020 which already took effect from 1st of january 2021 computation of pay tax with respect to Finance Act 2020. So, the first thing to start with always is your annual salary, right? So, annual pay, right? Annual pay. So, I said we should assume that this person is earning 500,000 naira, okay? So, if the salary is 500,000 naira, it means the annual pay would be. 500,000 Naira times 12, which is 6 million Naira. So, I'm trying to be as simple as possible. So, if someone is earning 6 million Naira per year, which is 500,000 Naira per month, what should come to a layman or just an average person is that there's a particular rate that they should just apply on it and then you get your tax and you pay to the state government. No, that is not how it works, okay? The government will give you allowance. They give you consolidated relief allowance consolidated relief allowance okay they do not want to tax the whole of this amount they want to give you some allowance if they tax the whole of this amount maybe they tax it 10 percent it means you pay 600,000 euro as tax but if they give you some allowance they allow you for 3 million then it remains 3 million then they tax 3 million that's 300,000 euro right so that's what consolidated relief allowance is so the way it was being calculated before you just take 20 percent of this Right? But now, Section 33, Subsection 2 of Personal Income Tax Act has been amended. And they, what did they do? They redefined these amounts, that is, this gross income, by saying that the gross income for the purpose of computing consolidated relief allowance should be reduced. So, we are now going to reduce this, okay? So, you say less pension. You're going to deduct NHF. You're also going to deduct NHIS, the amount to reduce, probably 5 million and something. Then it is upon that amount, you now get your consolidated relief allowance. So somehow your consolidated relief allowance has reduced, which you're going to see now as we do. So pension is 8% of your basic housing and transport. You know, they always break it down, right? So your company contributes 8% of your basic housing and transport. And then the personal income tax is saying you should deduct this amount from the annual pay for the purpose of con um, computing your consolidated relief allowance. Let me just explain what these amendments mean. What the government is saying is that since pension, NHF, NHIS, you know, is exempted from tax, they are not taxed, then we should not include it while computing your consolidated relief. So that amount they are giving you as consolidated relief allowance that they are exempting from tax. They are also exempting the portion of pension, NHF and NHIS from tax. So the next thing you are supposed to deduct is NHF. Okay, NHF is usually 2.5% of um, your housing, right? Housing is 1.5 million. The portion of housing in this 6 million is 1.5 million. So 2.5% of housing, let's do that, 2.5%. 0.025 times 1.5 million 
will give us 37,500. Then NHIS is National Health Insurance Scheme and that's supposed to be 5% of your salary you contributed to ensure your health basically and I think your employer is to contribute 10% of it yeah so let's just assume that this company they don't care about national health insurance scheme because it's actually voluntary it's not compulsory like pension and all of that okay so these are the deductions now when you deduct this from this is going to reduce this six million okay it's going to reduce this six million to a particular amount and we are going to get that right now so six million minus three hundred and sixty thousand minus seven thousand five hundred is going to reduce to five million six hundred and two thousand five hundred so after deducting this and this you have five million six hundred and two thousand naira which is now your redefined annual pay remember that that was the amendment right redefined annual pay or gross salary okay so don't forget or always think of it this way this is your annual salary this is the annual pay of this particular staff okay and Normally, the government will give you relief. They will relieve you of some amounts so that they don't tax everything, which is called consolidated relief allowance, okay? Now, they are saying we are not going to compute your relief based on this whole amount. We want to reduce, we want to reduce this amount to this. Then we will now compute your relief based on this amount, right? Like, your boyfriend is giving you 10% of his salary, of his old salary. Now he's saying he's reducing that his salary. And he's still giving you 10% of that salary. So it means what you are getting is also reduced. That's just basically. So, after they've reduced this amount, they've redefined the annual pay or the gross income. Now they will now give you the consolidated relief allowance. So you start consolidated relief allowance. Right? And that consolidated relief allowance is usually... 20% of your annual pay plus 1% of your annual pay or 200,000 whichever is higher okay so 20% of your annual pay 20% of this annual pay right not this because it has been redefined to this for the purpose of calculating consolidated relief allowance okay they don't want to give you allowance on something that is not something that is already non-taxable these are non-taxable elements of your salary so they are not going to give you relief you so they just got smarter okay but it's going to increase our tax that's just the whole summary so let's do 20 percent point two times five million six hundred and two thousand five hundred that gives us one million one twenty thousand five hundred is that right yeah so one percent also of this will give us 56,000 there about or 200,000 whichever is higher so plus 200,000 because 200,000 is higher okay so just always think of it that at least okay 200,000 so that is it then the next category of allowance they give you is now the normal pension nhf and nhis so the fact that you deducted it does not mean that you've deducted it you only deducted it to redefine you've not deducted it so this is where it's your relief is starting from do you understand so you have your pension it's very simple very very simple but if you don't understand it as i'm explaining it you ask me questions in the comment section you can even send me messages on whatsapp to understand it bombard me with your questions give me sleepless night let your questions give me high blood pressure go for it <laughs> i'm joking but it's very simple so just watch it again you understand so pension eight percent of basic housing and transport like we've already calculated so you have three million i'm sorry you have three sixty thousand so that's your pension contribution then you also have your nhf which is 2.5 percent of your basic which gave us 37 1500 and then nhis so, so most companies don't actually do this nhis but some big companies do it okay they ensure the health of their staff members so these are all the allowances you now add you now add the allowances right you add them up so when you add all these allowances what does it give you that gives you one million seven hundred and eighteen thousand naira okay so this is your total relief you know what they call relief now they are, they are relieving you instead of us to tax this whole amount that entered your pocket hmm? 
if I was to tax this whole amount, we will relieve you of this. So this is A and this is B. Okay? So what is going to be taxed? So now your taxable income, what is going to be taxed? I don't know, can they see this part? Let me just check. So your taxable income, what is going to be taxed is A minus B, okay? What you are earning the whole salary minus the total relief. Do you understand? So we have four million two hundred and eighty-two thousand naira, right? So this is what you're going to apply tax on, which I believe that you know how to tax this, okay? Seven percent, eleven percent, is it fifteen percent, nineteen percent? 21% and 24%, right? So I'm going to leave that on the screen. 7% on the first 300k, 11% on the next 300k, 15% on the next 500k, 19% on the next 500k, 21% on the next 1.6 million, um, then 24% on the next 3.2 million. So any balance left, actually, anything that is left, be taxed at 24 percent okay so that is basically how it is so the summary where i want you to understand in this computation is the redefinition of gross income or annual pay is in this part you understand the redefinition of gross income that before you know that this is how much you're earning and what they do is they just give you allowances they give you cra and they give you these other personal allowances you know but now they are saying they are going to give you this CRE you know but we are not going to give you this CRE based on this they are going to first of all reduce to this by removing the portion of which are, is not being taxed of your salary because by deducting all of this from by deducting all of this from your annual pay it means that they are not taxing this portion of your salary do you understand and I believe that you, you understand that yeah so that's just the um implication of the finance act on payee tax computation and i hope you understand it like i said earlier if you do not understand anything please just ask me questions in the comment section thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video do not forget to give this video a thumbs up bye